Action News Live at Midday begins with breaking news. Metro police are investigating a shooting where they say officers shot and killed a man who was threatening a woman with a knife. The alleged confrontation happened around 7.30 this morning near Cambridge and Twain. That's where we find Action News reporter Tina Patel, who's been on scene all morning. So, Tina, what is the latest? Well, Casey, the man that was shot in this instance by police was staying here at the Siegel Suites on Cambridge. T the officers tell us that that man was being evicted this morning, and when the manager talked to him, he said that if he was evicted, he would threaten some people. He would take them hostage. So the manager of the Siegel Suites called police. There was a couple officers who happened to be in the area. They were able to find that man on the street, but when they tried to stop him, that man did grab a woman who just happened to be in the area, and he put two knives to her. We are told that the officers tried to talk the man out of the situation. When they were unable to defuse the situation, they were forced to open fire. That man was hit, and he died later at the hospital. Now, back here live, this investigation is ongoing, and the street will be closed here while investigators stay on scene for quite a while. We are told that this is the eighth officer involved shooting in Metro's jurisdiction this year, the fourth that is fatal. They do take these cases very seriously, but they say they do want it to be known that that number is about half of the number of officer involved shootings that we had last year. So they say there are being improvements made as to what officers should do in situations like this. Reporting live, Tina Patel, Channel 13 Action News. Thank you, Tina. And we have more breaking news just into the newsroom. An application by the school district for $40 million in federal grant money will be filed. The teachers union and the school district were able to reach a resolution after Governor Brian Sandoval stepped in to mediate. We've been talking to you about this since this morning. Action News reporter Jessica Janner has the very latest. She's live in the newsroom. Jessica. Well, Casey and Lisa, this news comes with just hours left until the deadline to file, which is 1.30 this afternoon. The teachers union had been refusing to sign the application until Governor Sandoval came down to Las Vegas last night and talked to both groups. The money comes from the Race to the Top federal grant. CCSD is applying to receive $40 million. There's no guarantee the district will get the money, but one of the key signatures needed to apply was that of the union president. Ruben Murillo, who heads the Clark County Education Association, had not signed the application until now because he felt the district did not fully collaborate with the union. But perhaps the governor's clout was able to sway the union president to co-sign on the application. We don't know exactly all the details that were discussed in that meeting last night. The district says if awarded that money, it will go directly into classrooms. We'll have the latest on this story on later editions of Action News. Reporting live in the newsroom, Jessica Janner, Channel 13 Action News. I'm glad they were able to figure that yes. out. It's going to be very helpful, hopefully, if we get it for our school kids. $40 million would certainly help. Let's go to weather first now with Mike Chalinas. Thank you, Casey. 11.02 is the time. And it's a beautiful day. Have you been outside today, man? For if you're just waking up, it's gorgeous out there. Here's a look at your current temperatures under a nice little chunk of sunshine created just for you. 67 degrees at McCarran, 71 in Pahrump, 66 degrees in uh, Mesquite, and 68 degrees in Laughlin. Our day will be beautiful today, mainly sunshiny, but we could pick up a few high-level clouds. Won't produce any rain, though, for us. Light winds with an afternoon high of 79 degrees for your day planning forecast high. Coming up, temperatures drop this weekend, but by how much? We'll have that forecast straight ahead. Thanks, Mike. Now to Superstorm Sandy. Frustrations are running high because millions are fa facing a fifth day without power as temperatures drop and basic supplies run low. One of the hardest hit areas, Rockaway, New York. We're not sitting around singing kumbaya. This is really a dangerous, dangerous situation, and it's a real dangerous place in the dark. Almost 4 million people along the East Coast still didn't have power at last check. At least 92 people have died in the U.S. from the storm so far. The victims include two little brothers in Staten Island who were reportedly washed away by the storm. Their bodies were recovered from a marsh yesterday. The question on lots of minds now, could we have prevented that huge storm surge that flooded lower Manhattan from happening in the first place? Some experts say yes. They point to other systems in other places around the world that are doing it. Sea barriers built to protect European cities are common. Some scientists say Staten Island originally started as a natural barrier island, but the construction of roads, parking lots and homes created an urban landscape, taking away that natural shield. And it's all about coming together. The storm is bringing out the best in a lot of folks. We even saw it right here in our own community. We had so many.
many Action News viewers donate to the Red Cross, and we do appreciate all that you've done. Nationwide, the American Red Cross has raised more than $11 million since Sandy hit. The money will go towards helping the millions of families who have been hit the hardest. But a warning from authorities, don't be fooled. There are bogus charities out there looking for donations. So remember, only make a donation to a charity or a business that you know and trust. Most airlines say they're confident they can quickly clear their backlogs of stranded passengers. Airline schedules are starting to return to normal in New York and across the Northeast. Many carriers have added extra flights in hard-hit areas like New York. Close to 20,000 flights were canceled because of Sandy. Cell service is getting better for people in the hurricane zone, too. Almost 20% of cell sites in the region still knocked out, but that's down from 25% a couple days ago. Wireless carriers are bringing it backup equipment, but service is still spotty, especially in the hardest hit areas. Now to red, white, and blue 2012 political coverage. There's only four more days, if you can believe it, before the election. <laughs> wow. Both major party presidential candidates plan to campaign all day and into the night in the, key battle, the same key battleground state. ABC's Karen Travers has the details on their last minute messages. It's the battle for the Buckeye State. Both candidates barnstorming across Ohio today. President Obama kicked things off, slamming Mitt Romney on an issue that's really hurt him in this critical battleground. When I first made the decision to rescue the auto industry, I knew it wasn't popular. I knew betting on American workers was the right thing to do. Romney started his day in Wisconsin with what his campaign billed as a closing argument, which he seems to be making at almost every stop. This is about America. It's about the future we're going to leave to our children. We thank you, and we ask you to stay at it all the way to the finish line. The final jobs report before Election Day is out, and it's not earth-shattering. The U.S. economy created 171,000 jobs last month, but the unemployment rate ticked up to 7.9%. Analysts and political operatives say it's unlikely this will shake up the race in any significant way. The perceptions of the economy are already baked in at this point in the game. The last six months of what's happened in the last six months in the economy are baked in the perceptions. Both campaigns are focused on driving up turnout in their Ohio strongholds. Romney in the southeastern region, the president in the northeast corner. The latest ABC News Washington Post tracking poll showed a still razor tight race, but a slew of battleground state polls out this week give the edge to the president. Mitt Romney has 48 hours, I think, to adjust that. This weekend is huge for Mitt Romney. Ohio will not be able to escape the political spotlight. President Obama will be here every day until Election Day, and Mitt Romney is expected to make a few more stops as well. Karen Travers, ABC News, Cincinnati, Ohio. Mark your calendars, 100 new jobs are coming to Las Vegas. Cytel, a customer care provider, announced today that they will add 100 jobs to its customer care call center here in Las Vegas. The company is working closely with the Nevada Department of Employment and hosting an on-site job fair next Friday. It's happening at the company's facility on Pilot Road. Just stop in with your resume and be sure to dress to impress. The job fair is open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Still ahead on Action News Live at midday, there's regular yoga, hot yoga, Bikram yoga. But have you ever heard about face, <laughs> face yoga? Yes, for real. It's becoming the new craze with people stretching their faces to new extremes. We'll show you <laughs> what some of the looks claim to do for your face. They have classes for this? Apparently. All right, but first, it's the Las Vegas show that offers an experience like no other. Blue Man Group captivating audiences with their new show, they're joining us after the break to show us what you can expect. And in the middle of all that, we have near-perfect weather here in the Valley. Coming up, a look at the weekend in cooler temperatures and Election Day in just a bit. Eleven twelve is the time, and uh, take a look at this imagery. Gosh, is that beautiful. That's from our high-def roof cam. Looking across the Valley, and seeing all that beautiful sunshine out there, man, this is just kind of the day where you kick back and you say, you know what, I'm really happy I'm in Las Vegas. I'm sorry that other spots in the United States are not so nice weather-wise, but here it's fantastic, and I'm going to enjoy this while I can. 70 degrees right now at uh, McCarran, 70 degrees at Pahrump, 62 Indian Springs. It's 66 in Mesquite, and 72 degrees right now in Laughlin. 55 degrees in Henderson, and 60 
uh, although that uh, Southern Highlands uh, temp doesn't look like it's updated. 69 degrees north Las Vegas and 65 degrees at Nellis. A mix of sun and clouds today, but I'd say more than likely um, just uh, sunshine more than anything else. Just some high thin clouds out there, light winds and a high of 79 degrees. You can see the clouds leaving and that was a little cool front that worked its way through yesterday. Another short wave in the atmosphere providing a few clouds in California, but we'll stay high and dry today. That little energy pokes down to the south and east of us, but we look good right through the weekend hours. 54 tonight, 76 tomorrow, and then 78 with sunshine on Sunday. Upper 70s for Monday and Tuesday, pressing 80 on Wednesday, and then 74 on Thursday and 71 on Friday. The system that moved through here yesterday will push out to the north and east and middle Atlantic states by early Tuesday, providing another powerful low that will douse the east coast with rain showers on Election Day. It will not be anything at all like Sandy, though. Meanwhile, for us, something to point out to you, don't forget to set the clocks back one hour on Saturday night before you go to bed as standard time usurps daylight saving time. Lisa? All right, thank you, Mike. The fabulous Blue Men Group have been performing their brand new show at the Monte Crawler for the last few weeks now, and we are so excited that they are here. One of the captains is here, Mark Roberts. How are you? I'm fantastic, how are you doing? Good, okay, so first I gotta ask you, because you know Blue Man has been around in Vegas for years, and people have seen the show before, but is the new show just that. Is it new? Is there new? Are there new things to it? It is a, a new show. Mm -hmm. It is uh, new instruments, new music, new vehicles. We have uh, robots that we're on stage with. I'm so I'm I'm sorry. I'm so excited about this. It's, <laughs> I mean, I get to be on stage with robots. That's it's awesome. It's something I've wanted to do forever. And you are a blue man. Like you I are am. one of the guys that dresses up in the blue makeup, the black I, suit, the I whole do. thing. I I put the the goo on my face. Do I you get really? to go play. I get to do what I do. Um, uh, it's it's. A dream come true and I mean it, it's what we do we connect with people and sure. it's 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 totally part of the new show what we did is we took what we what we used to do and we turbocharged it I love uh, it. so much so even before the show now we have a free show uh, 45 minutes beforehand which is a dance party parade that goes on throughout the Monte Carlo on the casino floor uh, we and they, they are here, but they don't speak. No, right? they do no. not speak. Thank you so much. Thank that is you. so kind. And, but you guys have quite the, the decorations all the time. Thank you so what, much. Oh, is this a ring? <laughs> 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 well, thank you. Yes, I accept. Thank you. These are some, of our, these are some of our luminescence. Uh, uh, the show is all about stimulus. It's okay. all about the senses. And, and one of the aspects where we're totally uh, uh, coming in with is Thank the lights. You. Thank and, you. And, Thank and this you. is part of the new. This is part of it. Oh, just keep, yeah, I love rings. Anything to dress it up. It's beautiful. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And how do they do this, this blue? I always wonder, how do you do the makeup? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. With a Thank lot you. of practice. Thank um, you. Yeah. yeah. It takes a long time to do the whole thing. Time. How long did it take to get into the blue man get up? Uh, it, it, it takes about a half hour or so. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, but do it, they it's ever, worth it. It's, do they ever wear anything else besides the blue mock turtleneck? Because I, I, I'm not a big fan of a man in a mock turtleneck. Oh, you will be. <laughs> you will be. Come, come, see, come see the new stuff. We have shows nightly. Tickets right? starting $59. Uh, we, we, I'm telling you, we have everything. And part of the deal is, you know, Blue Man, they just like to cause trouble wherever they go, which clearly is what they're doing with we Casey like right now. We like to make events happen. We like to make uh, memories. What we do is, is we <laughs> set up experiences for people that they're never going to forget. Well, clearly they're never going to. We are never going to forget this here in the Action News Studio. So we want to uh, we want to just really say thank you so much to all of you guys for coming oh in. Gosh. And you can, of course, go and see um, Blue Man. They are at the Monte Carlo. Performing nightly, right? Performing nightly. And you guys have this parade that you do ahead of time. We do. It's a show before the show, 45 minutes. It's free. It's right. amazing. Come stop by. There are there are drummers. There are vehicles, creatures. Right. There are, All there's a giant fun. wheel that a person crawls around in. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for coming in. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here goes the plan. <laughs> Wow.
Welcome back in today's health report. If you're a redhead or perhaps maybe your child is, researchers say you're at a higher risk of melanoma. The genes that leave redheads a little more fair skinned also leave them more open to developing the cancer. And the study found it's not just when they spend more time in the sun either. So blocking the UV radiation through sunblock may not even be doing enough. We're not having as many babies anymore. American birth rates hit an all time low in 2011. The Centers for Disease Control says births dropped 1% compared to 2010, and the general fertility rate went down to the lowest ever for the United States. The report also found more than 40% of babies were born to unmarried women. That's actually down a fraction of a percent from the year before. It's like a facelift the natural way. Here's something you might want to try. It's trendy, apparently. <laughs> Face yoga. Yeah, face yoga. Face Apparently yoga. the technique guarantees that youthful glow without having Botox, fillers, or any kind of plastic surgery. The do-it-yourself <laughs> age-defying technique involves multiple facial expressions. A warning, though, they're not so flattering. Some doctors swear by it and say it really does promote collagen production. By stimulating any component of your face, like your muscles, you're going to have a beneficial effect in terms of your overall facial appearance. All right, if you want to try face yoga, there's the fish face right there. You can use that. They reportedly firm your cheeks and lips. Then there's the bumblebee, which helps your cheeks, lips, and jaw. Then the statchmo targets your cheeks as well. There it is. And then it's supposed to stretch out your facial um, features. And then there's the face lion right there. Face lion, Casey. Yeah. Face okay. Lion. Get right on that. I like the chewing. That <laughs> yeah. does well. Yes. All right, here's your chance to see one-of-a-kind artifacts that showcase Nevada's history. We'll tell you who's having a huge party. And now that Halloween is over, it's time to start focusing on Christmas. Coming up, we'll tell you how local Marines are making a difference for some local kids in need. Welcome back. Guns N' Roses have never been accused of being a warm and fuzzy type of group. And now there's outrage over some pretty controversial artwork to promote the band's residency at the Hard Rock Hotel. Some local leaders say it depicts a woman who's been sexually assaulted right there at the bottom of that picture. About an hour ago, representatives of the Rape Crisis Center, Safe Nest, and Clark County Commissioner Mary Beth Scow protested. Well, it's full speed ahead into the holiday season, and Toys R Us is already gearing up for Toys for Tots. We caught up with a few Marines yesterday taking early donations. The partnership between the Marine Foundation and the Toy Store ensures children in need will have gifts to unwrap on Christmas morning. Customers can donate new, unwrapped toys and baby products at any Toys R Us or Babies R Us store through December 2nd. Wednesday was officially Nevada Day, but this is one party that deserves an encore. Former Lieutenant Governor Lonnie Hammergren at it again, once again inviting the public into his home slash museum slash epicenter of things uniquely Nevada. Hammergren owns a ton of one-of-a-kind artifacts that showcase Silver State history. He's also collected things from all over the world, including airplanes, cars, several pianos played by Liberace. The good doctor says he's unveiling some special sets from Phantom of the Opera, too. His open house is tomorrow and Sunday. Coming up, the latest on the storm zone to the east. So many communities are still on edge as they try to rebuild their lives after Sandy. Now another punch coming their way. A nor'easter is threatening the region next week. I'll tell you what they're up against. Action News and Nevada Coin and Jewelry want to put you on Easy Street for a month by paying your rent or mortgage. To enter, type in ktnv.com slash win from any tablet, smartphone, or PC, or sign up on our Facebook page. Then watch Action News Live at 11 each night to see if you win. Daily winners get a $100 cash card. One winner each week gets their rent or mortgage paid. Remember, enter each day and you could soon find yourself on Easy Street, all thanks to your friends here at Action News. Right now on Action News Live at midday, tempers are flaring along the East Coast. We we get, something we to get heat. Storm victims say they're being left out in the cold and it could get worse. Forecasters say more wind, rain, and cold air could be coming back their way. Claims of voter fraud. Some say their votes are going to the wrong presidential candidate. We'll explain. And new details are emerging about that deadly attack on the U.S. consulate. There are claims the timeline of what happened doesn't match the story that we're all being told. 
1130 is your time, and today is a dilly of a dally of a weather doozy. Very, very nice outside, and it's a fantastic prelude into the weekend. 70 degrees right now at McCarran. It's 70 degrees in Pahrump. Look at this, man. It's just the weather's delightful. 73 degrees in Laughlin, 66 Mesquite. Our day planning forecast features a high that'll stay in the 70s, a little cooler than yesterday. Yesterday was 80. Today should be 79 for the high with a mix of, you know, occasional feathery high clouds, sunshine and light winds coming up. We'll take a look at the weekend and we'll take a look at uh, what election day should be like weather-wise across the United States, guys. Thank you, Mike, to our coverage now of Superstorm Sandy. New video out this midday shows just how bad the disaster zone is. Debris is everywhere. Hundreds of power poles are still down and many towns are still flooded. Hello and thank you for joining us for the second half of Action News Live at Midday. I'm Casey Smith. And I'm Lisa Remillard. There's something else that folks there just don't want to hear. There could be another storm brewing next week. This is a classic, classic nor'easter, but meteorologists say we really can't compare it to Superstorm Sandy. The problem is, though, as ABC's Brandy Hit will tell us, it brings rain, wind, and cold back to an area that's simply trying to survive right now. Sandy's victims woke up in cold, dark homes again this morning, facing yet another day of waiting for help. We, we can, we can. To get heat. Tempers are flaring up as many residents feel they have been left out in the cold. This is really a dangerous, dangerous situation, and it's a real dangerous place in the dark. On New York's Staten Island, one of the hardest hit communities, there is frustration and desperation. We lost everything. I mean, when you fix things, you do the best you can, you know? Try hard. You go to work every day, you do the best you can. In one Manhattan neighborhood, people felt the need to dive into dumpsters to retrieve food thrown out by restaurants. Hundreds of others stood in line for hours to get donated necessities. All the food we had to throw out of the refrigerator, so this is very needed right now. And it could get worse as forecasters say the temperatures in the Northeast will dip into the 30s this weekend, adding to the anger and misery, lengthening gas lines. For three hours! Gas shortages in some areas are reaching near crisis levels. Few stations are open, and those that are cannot meet the demand. So I'm waiting over three hours. What's wrong with this country? Officials say Sandy is on track to become the second costliest storm in U.S. history, with some damage estimates reaching $50 billion. Experts now wonder if a high-tech sea barrier could have stopped the 14-foot storm surge that flooded lower Manhattan and washed away parts of the Jersey Shore. Some designs have proven effective on some coastal regions in Europe. The Statue of Liberty is also closed until further notice so crews can inspect for damage. Brandy Hit, ABC News, New York. Banks are offering up some financial help to the victims of Superstorm Sandy. Several banks, including Bank of America, Chase, and American Express, have sent out email, notif email notifications to credit card customers saying that they may qualify for special credit offers if they were impacted by the storm. We have new information this midday on the September 11th terrorist attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya that left four Americans dead. A senior U.S. intelligence official says there was a 25-minute gap between the initial call for help from the consulate and the officer's arrival at the U.S. mission. Well, officials say the officers used those 25 minutes to get weapons loaded into vehicles. The new information comes in response to a Fox News report last Friday that said officers on the ground were ordered to stand down during the attack. The U.S. government says that's not true. Dozens of victims from that movie massacre in Colorado may get some help soon to pay off those medical bills. 52 victim claims were submitted yesterday. They're hoping to get a piece of the fund to set, that was set up to support them. 12 people were killed and at least 58 others were injured when a gunman opened fire at the premiere of that Batman movie back in July. The claims received so far are coming from families of victims who were killed, paralyzed, or suffered some sort of brain injury and those who had overnight hospital stays. Right now a mediator is determining how much claimant, uh, each claimant will receive from the more than five million dollars collected from donors. Two former Penn State administrators are being arraigned today charged with keeping hush-hush about the uh, child sex abuse allegations against former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky. The arraignment of athletic director Tim Curley and Vice President Gary Schultz comes one day after they and former President Graham Spanier were accused in uh, a 39-page grand jury report of conspiring to conceal complaints about Sandusky, giving him time and access to molest more boys before the arrest. 
The Boulder City Boys and Girls Club is officially closing today. It's a story we've been following all week. It's happening because of lack of funding and staff. Some parents say they're willing to take the program over themselves. They're planning to petition the mayor of Boulder City and the city council to help them reopen it. Red, white, and blue 2012. It's the battle for the Buckeye State. Both presidential candidates are full steam ahead across Ohio. President Obama started things off early this morning while Mitt Romney started his day in Wisconsin. Ohio will not be able to escape the spotlight, though. President Obama will be there every day until Election Day, and Mitt Romney is expected to make a few stops there as well. President Obama's last pre-election rally will be Monday in o Iowa. He'll stump in Wisconsin and Ohio before that, then wrap up his campaigning in Des Moines. Iowa was a crucial win for the president back in 2008. He has visited 11 times so far this year. Mitt Romney will hold his final rally in New Hampshire on Monday night. It's the same state he announced his bid for the White House. As of this morning, 50% of registered voters in Nevada have voted early. More than 626,000 people have cast an early ballot, including more than 435,000 here in Clark County. Those are some amazing numbers. If you combine early voting with absentee ballots, more than 275,000 were registered Democrats, more than 234,000 were Republicans, and almost 117,000 have no party affiliation. Accusations of voter fraud, though, are flying in Nevada. The Republican National Committee sent a letter to state election officials claiming voting machine malfunctions are giving Mitt Romney's votes to President Obama. The RNC is asking for all machines to be recalibrated, but Secretary of State Ross Miller says his office hasn't received any complaints. Miller went on to say the RNC letter fails to provide any direct evidence that any particular voter in Nevada experienced any errors with their voting machines or any details which could be used to open an investigation. Still ahead on Action News, you may see some big colorful balloons in the air today. We'll explain why. And Megan is up next. Coming up next, I'll have your 13 things to do this weekend. See how Las Vegas is celebrating UNLV Homecoming Weekend. Then learn how we're honoring military veterans right here in our community. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Friday. 1141 is the time, and it's just absolutely luscious out there right now. Doesn't that... Doesn't that look good? It's like invigorating. It's like get out there and enjoy this nice weather. And it's beautiful out there. The imagery, fantastic. Um, looks like a golf course across the street from a, uh, at least I didn't know we had one, but but, but it looks yes, like Yes, it that. does. Beautiful. I like that. Why not? 70 degrees, our current temperature at McCarran, the same in Pahrump. 73 in Laughlin, 62 Indian Springs, and 66 degrees in Mesquite. I think we'll see a beautiful day weather-wise today. Occasionally the wisp of, you know, some higher level clouds, but... That's really going to be about it. 71, our lunchtime temp, and then 79 degrees eventually for the afternoon high today. With light winds throughout, it's really a perfect day to just get out there and enjoy the nice weather. So day planning work forecast or winter weather-wise. A little cool front has slipped to the east of us now. There's yet another one sort of racing at us from the north and west, but neither to any great avail other than to reduce temperatures a little bit down in the mid-70s by tomorrow. We'll be just... A little shy of 80 today, as mentioned prior. You see, with the upper level energy model, there's not much to get excited about, nor is there with future radar keeping everything way up to the north of us. So it looks like a quiet weekend for us with lots of sunshine and temperatures just a little bit cooler than what we uh, have been uh, dealing with lately. Meanwhile, the same cold front now that pushed through here yesterday is going to race towards the east. Now, this is a bigger wave of energy, and off it will spin a little short wave of energy that either can swing up this longer wave and push up into the northeast or track out more to sea. And as that happens, you'll get moisture that will come back over the top of it. That's really kind of what a nor'easter is. I don't see this being a true nor'easter where it's a meteorological bomb and it's super deep. That's not going to happen. But... It should be a rain provider along the eastern seaboard for Election Day. Meanwhile, it'll be gorgeous here in the west, as per usual, you know. 54 degrees, the overnight low tonight. And then I think we'll be at 76 tomorrow with lots of sunshine. 78 for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with plenty of sunshine. Close to 80 by Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday.
Dropping finally off to the low range of, of the 70s, everybody mariachi. I'm telling you what, Mike, you know, when we think of school music programs, we usually think of orchestras, marching bands, choirs, but there's another flavor of music that's exploding in our schools, mariachi. Mariachi Los Bravos de J.D. Smith Middle School is here, and Giovanni Cortez is the section leader of the group. Welcome, Giovanni. Welcome, guys. I'll tell you what, not too many groups could follow the Blue Man Group, but I've heard these guys and they're great. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, I'm doing fine. Now, you're here to promote a, uh, an event that you guys are having. What is it? Um, we are having our annual Music in the Park at Hearty Park at J.D. Smith Middle School. Okay, and, uh, and you're the featured group. Um, you're the section leader. What grade are you in? I'm in eighth. And you're all in eighth grade, but you've been together for a while, I understand, right? Yes. About three years? About three years, yes. What made you want to play the violin? Um, my brother, he was, he inspired me because he was good. And he's in a, I guess, professional group right now. Well, you guys, you guys aren't too bad, too. You, you could rival some professional groups. Now, I do, I do need to point out that uh, we have a ringer here, okay? Yeah. It isn't that he flunked out. This is one of the instructors, <laughs> like, yeah. John. okay. All right, but what you guys do is make a lot of fun music, and you've been doing this for quite a while, and it, does it give you more of a feel of, like, togetherness when you come out in a group like this? Yes. Okay. We uh, are running out of time. I want to hear this music, and we all want to give them a taste of what's going on. So, ladies and gentlemen, the J.D. Smith Middle School Mariachi Band. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> Welcome back. After a long journey, Space Shuttle Atlantis has arrived at its new home at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Atlantis will hang from the ceiling of the visitor's complex. It's the fourth and finer orbiter to be delivered to its display home since the shuttle program ended. You may see some big colorful balloons in the air today. A three-day festival to benefit friends of Metro Search and Rescue is happening at Southern Hills Hospital. The organization is made up of volunteers who provide technical rescue services. You can take a ride in one of those hot air balloons now through Sunday. Getting in is free, but you do have to pay for the balloon ride. There's nothing like a good food fair, and we've got a doozy this weekend. It's the Las Vegas Foodie Fest. 40 food trucks <laughs> just paraded down the strip to start off that event. And at 4 o'clock this afternoon, they'll get the cooking going at the Silverton Hotel. The Foodie Fest runs through Sunday. It'll cost you 8 bucks to get in for one day or $12 to get in for the entire weekend. Of course, food is extra. Absolutely. It will definitely be a busy first weekend of November here in Las Vegas. If you're into football, school spirit, or you want to honor our military, there's lots of things to do. Here's social media producer Megan Tellis with 13 things this weekend. Happy homecoming week, Las Vegas. It's time for all UNLV alumni to unite. The fun starts today with a rebel parade at Town Square Mall. Dress in scarlet and gray and join the fun from 2 to 6 p.m. Carnival rides, giveaways, you'll be sure to get in the rebel spirit. This is all in an effort to pump up Las Vegas for the UNLV homecoming football game going down tomorrow. The boys take on New Mexico at Sam Boyd Stadium at 1 o'clock p.m. The halftime show is going to be really special, so be sure to grab tickets to the game today. 
And in this week's social spotlight, our Facebook fans took to the polls this week and not to vote for the next president, but we asked you to vote on the event you wanted to learn more about. The results are in, and the winner is the Veterans of Memorial Day service in Henderson. One Facebook fan, Lori Vu, passionately wrote on our page saying, we have many that have served our country and have lost their lives fighting for our country. We need to focus on paying tribute to our veterans. And that's exactly what's happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Get out to the Veterans Memorial Wall in the city of Henderson for a presentation of the colors by Basic High School's JROTC. To learn more about these events and the rest of the 13 Things list, visit the event slideshow on our website, ktnv.com. Take pictures while you're out and about this weekend and shoot them over to iContribute at ktnv.com or tweet me a pic. My handle is at mtellis. With your 13 things to do this weekend, I'm Megan Tellis, Channel 13 Action News. And we'll be right back with a final look at your forecast. You're watching Channel 13 Action News, making Las Vegas a better place to live. It's time to stay and play with Action News this morning. The fastest way to start your day. All winners get one night plus a buffet for two at one of the amazing Station Casinos hotels featuring the boarding pass. For fun, food, entertainment, and more, there's a Station Casinos hotel near you. Plus a Freddy card good for $100 in gas. Grub and more at Fabulous Freddy's. For your chance to win, text LOCALS to 61749 or enter on our website, then watch us each morning. If you see your name, call within 30 minutes and claim your prize. Stay and play with Action News this morning. 11.55 is your time. It's a gorgeous day outside right now. I just love this shot. It just makes us, look at this, guys. It makes it look like we're on a golf course here right outside the studio. I didn't know where that golf course was, but I like it. Uh, right now, we have 70 degrees at McCarran and 73 degrees at Pahrump. Lots of sunshine today. We'll get up to about 79 for the high. A little cooler for tomorrow, but a very nice weekend upcoming as well. 11.55 is your time. Coming up tonight on Channel 13 Prime Time, Last Man Standing starts at 8, Malibu County at 8.30, Shark Tank at 9, 2020 at 10, should be Malibu Country, and Action News Live at 11. All right, a Los Angeles woman has been driving around with $23 million in her car for the last five months. She didn't even know That's it. That's unbelievable. $23 million. Okay. The millions were in the form of a winning lottery ticket. Wow. Well, she bought it back in May, never checked the ticket. Then five months later, when no one stepped up to claim the prize, a newspaper published the surveillance photos of her. That's when the winner's daughter reportedly saw the article and told her mom to look at her ticket. Luckily, she found it. She still had it. It was in her glove box. Wow. Hey, we want to say thank you so much to our friends Blue Man Group for uh, trashing our studio. And uh, apparently they I did some damage. I got a real damage. bone to pick with a Blue Man. Yeah, apparently. This is my favorite yeah. cup, my water cup, you my coffee cup. They left their blue lipstick. My blue lip cup. <laughs> so thank you to What's them. Don't forget to go see their brand new show at the Monte Carlo Performing Nightly. It is a water fantastic blue. show. Yeah, it's, it's sticky blue, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Mariachi Los Bravos de la J.D. Smith Middle School having an event tomorrow at 10 to 3 at Hartsky Park. It's free great. food, free drink, free fun. Free music by the Mariachi Band. Injured in an auto accident? Call Harris and Harris Personal Injury Lawyers. Proven results.